It's been a crazy week in Boca Chica as we saw the return of testing with engines finally fired again and the highly anticipated steel plate finally being moved to the launch site. Stay tuned for everything you need to know. Over at the QD arm, it is still missing its main connector. This is most likely due to the modification it needs as the booster will become higher with the hot staging rings. This means the ship also will be higher, thus a move of the QD height will be needed. All the piping in the arm still needs to be removed as only the adapter will most likely be changed, not the entire QD arm itself. Just for the newer people, a QD or quick disconnect supplies the rocket in the countdown sequence with the needed liquids and power. Once the rocket is close to liftoff, it will quick disconnect, where the name comes from, to move it away from the rocket and protect its important hardware. Down at the booster, we saw the return of the booster QD hood. This part of the infrastructure only needed repairs and not significant modifications since the booster part of the infrastructure, at least from a QD perspective, will probably not change that much for flight two. Over at the orbital tank farm, we saw tankers. This means some of the tanks are returning to operation. The launch and test campaign for Booster 9 is probably a few weeks away, but it might indicate that GSC testing is coming up very, very soon. At the OLM, more plates and shielding were prepared for the upcoming second flight of Starship, as the pad will probably need a few good layers of shielding to withstand the power from Flight 2. While it was not the most damaged part of the infrastructure, <coughs> concrete, <coughs> it still took a good hit. The big concrete operation at the OLM was also prepared this week and later executed. Remember, below the pad was a huge crater after the first flight, so this is part of the effort to prepare the pad for future launches. Late at night, the concrete pouring began as SpaceX moved over 100 tanker trucks with concrete to the OLM. As you can see in this time lapse, placing all of this concrete below the OLM took a very long time. Another part that was moved was a cryo pipe around the launch site. It's a replacement part, an old part, or a part of a completely new area of the system. Since Mechazilla gets so little love these days, here's a small update. It got more stairs! Yay! A small staircase had been lifted into the tower to allow easier access to some tower levels. Let's hope it does not share the same fate as the last stairs installed at the orbital launch site, which were removed days after construction. Over at the launch site, we also saw another methane storage tank installed at the methane storage area. Moving down Highway 4 at the production site, more layers of the new Mega Bay 2 have been placed, as the building is at about half the height of Mega Bay number 1. SpaceX is not wasting its time with the new building. A day later, SpaceX moved another part of the new Mega Bay to the build site for stacking. They assembled these in parts behind the Starbase sign before moving them to where the Mega Bays are because space is at a big premium there. Holding this pace, we could see a full height second Mega Bay in just weeks. The next corner section was then placed on the existing frame. This makes it the third corner that has been placed on the third level. After this third level, there are two more full levels, plus the top level, which are needed to complete the full building. We also saw some concrete getting poured near Highway 4, which might be going with the new ground lines, which are running alongside the highway to the pad. At least this pour didn't warrant 100 concrete trucks. Later, we saw a digger patching some of the trenched roads. Speaking of diggers, if you dig our patches for the first orbital test flight, you should get them while they're still available. You can find them at shop.nasaspace.com flight.com where you can also buy a lot of other cool rocket stuff such as shirts that show how we lost some of our cameras and of course our starship full stack plushie check it out we can't forget about the most significant event last week ship 25 successfully fired its six raptor engines in a static fire test of the upper stage for next flight It seems crazy as so much work still needs to be done, but Flight 2 is already casting its shadows here, with half of the vehicle-ish already complete 
with its test campaign. Elon later confirmed that the test looked quote good so far as you can see in the test the LOX load was relatively high while the methane load on the tank was low. This is most likely for counterweight purposes as it is less harmful to use LOX as a counterbalance than the highly explosive methane should something go wrong. Also to note was the use of the header tank for this test. We don't have any insights if the header tanks conducted the fire or if they were just filled for testing purposes, but it's interesting to see at the least. Elon also shared this amazing shot on Twitter where you can see where the thrust of the Raptors is pushing the flames out. It looks like a triangle shape around the ship. On the smaller side of tests, the flaps of Ship 25 were also tested on the same day as the static fire. Look at Ship 25 waving to our cameras. These tests are further pushing Ship 25 to flight readiness. It would not surprise me if the next ship test would be a full wet dress rehearsal on top of Booster 9 in just a few months time. Part of the new Deluge system is also already at the launch site and partially installed. SpaceX will need the pipes and tanks shipped over mostly from the Cape to support the new steel water suppression plate with water and nitrogen. Over the last few weeks teams have already been digging underneath the OLM to support the installation. Later in the week, SpaceX opens the tent for the first time where the new deluge suppression steel plate was located. A quick overview just to remember how the plate works. The plate will be placed below the OLM and then eject water almost like a shower head against the power of the Raptor engines. This suppresses most energy that would otherwise fire against the ground, concrete and infrastructure. It's the new plan to withstand the power of Super Heavy at launch. The plate was assembled in the tent close to the rocket garden while another big installation stand was also prepared for the steel plate. The installation stand will allow the plate to fit vertically between the legs to then be placed under the OLM. The first signs we could see that the move was coming up was SpaceX workers securing the plate on the SPMTs. Remember, while it sounds just like a small thing, it's a multi-ton heavy steel plate that could be dangerous if it tips over. Also, SpaceX probably wants it at the launch site in one piece. SpaceX then scheduled a two hour moving closure down Highway 4 as the plate would block most of the road to the launch site. At a scheduled road closure late at night, we saw the steel plate and stand move to the launch site. The stand went first, while the plate, with some people sitting on it, moved after. The whole convoy reached the launch site after about an hour, and we're still awaiting the installation that you will hopefully see in our next Starbase update. Next up will be the installation on the frame, which will then move the plate into the OLM where it will then be placed. So what do you think? Will the steel plate work? Or will SpaceX have to redesign the system all over again after the second flight? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching and goodbye.